In this section of the video, we'll discuss how we can use the attribute brush to drive the look of a material on a per vertex basis using the material graph and print bars. This video expects you to have some familiarity with editing MDL materials in the material graph. To illustrate this workflow, I've pre-set up a simple puddle material graph that allows for wetness, opacity, and thresholding to be composited on top of my concrete tile material. Let's do a quick overview of the graph. Navigate to the stage outliner and locate the concrete wetness material under the look scope. Right click the material and select open MDL in material graph. This is a relatively simple material with four texture inputs, the base color, roughness, normal, and height texture maps. For the three material properties, we use a simple linear interpolate to adjust the look of each property based on a factor fed by the height map and some thresholding logic that we'll look at in a moment. First, if we look at our base color, we're simply interpolating between the raw base color and a darkened version. Second, if we look at our roughness map, we're simply interpolating between the raw roughness value and a value of zero, which will make the surface appear more glossy as the puddle begins to pool. And finally, for the normal, we interpolate between the normal map and the surface normal, such that the puddles appear to flatten as the puddles begin to pool. Finally, let's look at our puddle blend factor. We have some simple logic for opacity and thresholding of the height map. When I select the opacity float node and increase its value, the material becomes uniformly wet across the entire surface. If I modify the threshold float node, this adjusts the fall off of the puddles, making them appear softer with higher numbers. With lower numbers in the threshold property, the puddles will appear to have a harder feathered edge. Cool effect, but we'd like to be able to apply these properties variably across the vertices, such that we can localize the areas of wetness. This is where the attribute brush comes into play. Let's navigate to the paint panel, select our plane mesh, and have a look at the attribute name section of the tool. The attribute name parameter offers a great way to view the existing prim bars on a USD prim or create them directly from the tool. Let's have a look at what prim bars currently exist on our USD prim. Simply press the three dots and mouse over the prim bar flyout. As you can see, we have the display color attribute we used in the previous section, display opacity, and ST, all default prim bars that exist by default on most USD prims. What we want to do is add a new prim bar so that we can paint the opacity of the puddles. To do this, press the Create New Prim Bar button, and that will open a new Create Paintable Attribute dialog. In the attribute name, we'll type prim bars colon puddle opacity. We'll leave the attribute type as alpha, as the property we will paint is simply a float. Let's press create. The available prim bars on a USD prim can be found in the raw USD properties of the selected prim in the property panel. To see this, let's navigate to that section. Let's scroll down until we see the prim bars. And as you can see, the newly created prim bars puddle opacity should appear. Now let's go back to the material graph and hook up the special data lookup node so that the MDL graph can integrate with the USD prim's new attribute. On the left-hand side of the material graph view, let's search for the prim bar lookup float node. 
and drag that into the canvas. Let's replace our opacity float node with the new data lookup node. And finally, with the new node selected, let's navigate to the inputs dropdown in the property panel. And under inputs name, let's type puddle opacity. We can leave the default value to zero. Now with our material graph set up to read the prim bar from the USD, let's hop back to the paint tool. Let's set our color value to something like 0.25. And finally, let's select our mesh, press the paint button, and begin to paint. As you can see, we have puddles starting to appear where our brush strokes are. This looks great, but we want to be able to control the fall off of our puddles as well as the opacity. To do this, we'll repeat the process with a new puddle threshold prim bar. Let's once again go to the material graph and add a new prim bar lookup float node and type puddle threshold into the input's name. And for this, we're going to set a default value of 0.33. Let's wire this into our node graph here. And let's go ahead and paint that property. So we'll select our plane mesh again select the paint button, and you can see that attribute name has already been filled out with our new puddle threshold prim bar. Begin to paint. As you can see, we can now control the thresholding or feathering of our puddle variably across the surface as well as the opacity. And there we have it. We've created a dynamic material whose properties can be painted on a per vertex basis with the paint tool. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of how powerful this interrupt between the paint tool and the material graph can be.